Thanks for staying with us. So a story went viral very recently about a young 17-year-old child who was raped by a well-known man in Nigeria. Um, for the sake of his identity, I would not mention his name. For those of you that are interested, you can go online and check the story. But well, it's heartbreaking when you hear an underage child explain her ordeal, especially because she's from poverty and she's, she has to work under this family. To add more salt to injury is when um, the woman in the house is complicit in this entire matter. So here's the story. A young 17-year-old girl working as a help in, uh, in, the, in the house of this man. Um, the man disvirgined her. I mean, he took, he took, he took some time some time to actually get to the point. Groomed he, kept, he groomed her. So he would take her, he would talk to her, he would touch her body. And then he take, took her, one time he took her in the car, he drove around to the red, red light district to show her how people, are, how people dress up in the red light district, um, opened some, showed her some pornography, to make, just to ease her into that. Eventually, according to the girl, he raped her uh, September 21 last year for the first time, and that's when she was bleeding all through. And since then, up until this news broke, he was consistently raping her. Twice a day in the morning, at before 5, we were about 5 a.m., and then in the evening and time when the family goes to sleep. This continued to the point where the wife, she now eventually got the wife involved. You know, the wife was able to know and then realized that the wife was even beating her on this matter. Now, we're, we're referencing this story, and I'm, and I'm really, really struggling not to mention the names because the names are on social media. Um, because um, sometimes we need to bring these stories to the fore because this is a, this is a power struggle. The, the haves and the have-nots, mm -hmm. the rich and the poor. The fact that um, because I'm poor, I have to subject myself to these kind of humiliation choice. because I need this, this person's resources or I need this roof over my head. I need the food. I need the food on my table. I need my family to be well taken care of. You can see from the conversation this girl had with the host of the program where we saw the story, she needed that covering of this family and she, was, she had to stay there. So... My conversation with our late ladies is, where do we, how do we help people in this situation? <sighs> so we have the victims, the girl, in this situation, how do we help them? Some of them are probably watching TV right now. We have the wives who are aware that their husbands are raping or sleeping with made. their helps. And they're not doing anything about it because for them, I'd rather him do it inside than outside. Hmm. At least the person I'm doing, I know that I can see the person. I know the person. Mm -hmm. He's not going outside. So the girl in the house is your own pawn. Hmm. And then the man involved. How do we prosecute him and get him to pay for what he's doing? How can we even get men to stop in this? That, that's the conversation. Please call us on the numbers on your screen. Um, and let, let's you can join the conversation. You can also 081 270 091 You can also... Tweet to us at TV Second, please hashtag your view TV so we can read your tweets. It was so difficult when I was hearing this story. It was like piercing through my soul when I was hearing this girl. This girl was relating her story. So um, um, she, she's 21 now, but it's been on for three years. And um, we are doing a lot. And it is part of the things we are doing that is making people like her feel there's opportunity to speak up. So... This lady got information about that she, can, she can't continue life like this and there, was, there could be a solution. So she reached out to a TV platform to explain this is what I'm going through. And I think that's what we do, let you know that there are places you can go to. You can go to NAPTIP, you can go to, um, what's this place in, um, uh, Warif. There mm -hmm. are people, civil society people that you can reach out to if you, if you find yourself in a situation where you're being abused to get help. But let me talk about the... Uh, this is an economic challenge and a power tussle where a man feels he's powerful and nothing can happen and he preys on a 17-year-old innocent girl, groomed her into a sex slave. Because that for me was... She, you, did, you put it all listen to when she, she, he, 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 he rapes her when she's on a period. He rapes her when she's on a period, when it's not possible, when she's injured, he rapes her from the back. What? Like it was, it was animalistic for someone in that level, because this person is a well-known figure, to do such. 
and my biggest worry is he might pay his way out of this. So now this poor girl reached out to the wife and the wife was begging the um, girl to protect her marriage, you mm. know, because for her, that's, the, she, every, the ent her entire family relies on this man. He's a rich man. Mm. She works for her husband. The entire family of the wife work for the husband. If she loses her marriage, her entire family is in crisis. So there's an economic power play here. Mm. And until we deal with that issue where people that are powerful, because my biggest fear is that he might not even, he would escape. Because the height of it is she might recount her story where she gets paid enough because it's an economic thing. There's the kind of money they would drop on the table now and she would say, it's not true. Yeah, but that is what happened to her. And she her story needs to be heard. And I pray she has enough support to help her stand a ground. a ground regardless of what anybody throws at her because this is a pathetic, young, innocent girl that was brought to Lagos to stay with someone so that she can... Be, she, she goes to school. So is that kind of not the typical house girl? You know those, the ones that will come and they just collect money and go, no, this was I'm helping you, then I'll help your family. Nima, let me come to you because I know this is something that you're quite familiar mm. with. You have cases you've dealt with and stuff like this. Um, as I said, there are three layers. The victim, um, the, the woman involved, and the, the man, the perpetrator himself. Um, where do we start this conversation? So, so um, as a society, because I have seen where somebody tries to break this chain and it led to her death. That's the one I saw. Where she has to serve her maid to her husband every night. And one night when she said, when the maid pleaded with her, this is not why you brought me here. I'm just 14. I'm tired of this life and you are not even sending me to school. The moment she tried to say to her husband, can you just let her be that night? He strangled her and she was you know, found dead in the morning. The thing for me is a society of victim and a, a society of poverty excuses thing, things. So growing up, every time I see these cases, it just continues to make more sense to me why it is important to raise yourself and your family and your children with a life of dignity. There's nothing wrong with a plate of gari. There's nothing. Mm. There's nothing wrong with it. Mm. It is okay if it is what you can serve your family part time. Mm. And you must let them understand how important it is that that is what we have and that is what we will eat. Contentious. And any other thing outside of it that you know brings a sort of indignity or insult or you know or demeans Abuse. our family values, we will not take it. You must raise children to uphold that no matter what. At all levels. At all levels, yes. because life will continue to try them. This poor girl. One family will say, you are our breakthrough. Mm. You are our, you are your of this family. You are our solution. You are the one that will pull us out of poverty. At the and question, so without, the without questioning how it is done. A lot of girls on that Maza Maza Red Light District are living like this. Somebody has told them, it, you are the solution to our poverty matter in this family, no matter how it is done. And so you see somebody lives a life of damage all their life. They don't even have a quality of life. And the person benefiting from it, as long as cash is coming, will not really say, how do you feel? This poor girl was groomed. If somebody at some point had told her, no matter what it is you are facing, come back home. Mm. She could have walked out and said, I know where to go. But if the fear is, if I tell my mother, they say, what have you seen? Is it you first? Mm. Mm. You know, she will stay there. We must take away that thing. I don't know how it is going to be done. Cooking for your children with sawdust, making them see that, oh, auntie, I will not thief. This is how we will eat. And this Gary, we will drink it with dignity. Till today, it's now snacking for me. Drinking coconut and Gary in the afternoon for me is heavenly. I don't know how it makes people, people, other people feel. Mm. I can afford better, but I still love and relish my Gary and, coco uh, and, and uh, coconut and Gary. But the idea is because being rather than Rather than go and beg for it, right. we will harvest the coconut at the backyard, break it, and we have Gary available. Some right. people would, you know, there's certain things yeah. that we will call extreme poverty, but there's poverty of demand, which is even more dangerous. And we need to take All right, let me that. go on a quick break. When we come back, we'll get to Maram's initial thoughts and we'll take this continue further. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So from this story, it's quite pathetic because... Based on even what she's been said so far, it looks like the wife is equally also a victim in this because she also married this man. And she's finding it difficult to even be empowered herself to say, I'm walking away. Just like you said, this man, the wife works, works in the together. man's office. Mm. Our entire family 
is under this man. So she also is a victim in this situation. Yeah. Maram, what are your thoughts? Yeah, so the story is definitely about a man who has figured out that I am, first of all, the man, the man that has the power, the money, and I determine and I pay for anything I want. And so he, from just the story, from what I would, my opinion is that he has married the woman, but she's also been abused. Um, if she was married when she was really young, as I heard, if he, 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 he's paying for her, so she, he, got, she, he, he married her, she's having children for him, and then now that her use is done, he's going for the next young person to, you know, abuse. And sometimes they say hurt people hurt people. Mm. So this is a woman that she has not been empowered, not even just uh, financially, I'm even talking mentally. She has not even grown from that child or that young wife that has been uh, married and she's given birth. She knows that this is her Lord and her master. Mm. The way that her drinking, her eating, her mm. just whole livelihood depends on him. And she has now realized that that's what she used to give, what she could have given as payback. She can't give it anymore. So there's another person that is in that stead. So that's why she's begging that woman to stay to, as a Begin form of collateral for her own lifestyle. Mm. What would happen if this girl continues, if this girl never spoke up is when she's done, God forbid if she had a younger sister and she brought to the house. This is a cycle that is likely to continue. Mm. And I hope that because she has spoken today, he will be called out. He will be properly prosecuted for this. He should be made to pay mm. for what he's done. Many, many years of, um, of rape. But the sad thing is that that woman is complicit. The wife, yes. she is complicit. They say, yes, hurt people, hurt people. But mm. she has played a part Absolutely. in this. She could have walked away. And that is why I think what you said about this um, understanding... Perfect. The dignity of you as a human being is brilliant. I was just saying to my sister and I were talking. I talk about this every time that I come from a home where we struggled materially. Mm. It was tough for us when we were growing up. And we were discussing my sister. We said we had never seen... My grandma was very much a part of our life. And we had... No matter how small she had, I'd mm. never seen my grandma go cap in hand, mm. begging people. Now you go to someone and say, Auntie, give me money. Mm. Auntie, these are children. We, if you dared say that when Amen. I was growing up, you will be severely this is, this punished. An, this is an important point. Were, it was important for you to know that what you have was enough not for you. you. Mm -hmm. And there are some gifts you will even not take. You will yes. not collect some gifts because it does not make sense. Why are you giving me this gift? Mm -hmm. At what cost? Mm -hmm. Let me pause and you for a second okay. because my, this is a very important point. I don't want us to mm. lose at all. Let me take this call. Dan is in holding for a while. Good morning, Dan. Oh, I'm so sorry, Dan. Coming back to yeah. the point you're making concerning, you dare not take something from outside because yeah. they're teaching us content. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. So I also, went, I, I tell you people, I went to a school where my mom's salary could barely cover her fees. I went to school with kids that... They were fathers, were governors, commissioners. They used to bring them to that school. I could clearly tell that there was a difference, but I carried myself just like any one of them. Thank I you. was there in school. We did our school work. I was very good in school, and that was all. It did not matter to me what cars they came in, what they had, what kind mm. of food they brought in. Yeah. That I had, you know, what I had was enough. And I try to raise my children that way as well, because they see things. They go out, they see things, and they must understand that. Good for you, nice for you, but this but is I'm mine fine. and I'm, and I'm fine. fine. It's not okay. I see this all the time and I've seen it even with parents that are educated and exposed. You go to their homes, their children are begging you for stuff. And sometimes these parents will even join you to say, ah, you did not even drop something for my child. That is the beginning of that sort of behavior okay, so where you feel that you're entitled to people's... Um, um, goodwill or you're entitled to people's gifts. You are mm. not. All right, and so you should be okay with what you have. Level, but you see, there's also the poor of the poor. Madam, there's a, there are different levels, which, which you said that, okay, place of Gary, but there's, there are some levels. Are I'll I've come to that in a minute. Let me take this call yeah, from um, Hassan, I think. Mm -hmm. Good morning, are you there? Hello? Morning. Hassan, you're live. Go ahead, please. Uh, please, I don't want us to be too emotional about it. And I don't want you to be carried away. But I appreciate you for trying to balance it off as an anchor. You see, whenever it comes to this issue of race, we always try to jump 
as a conclusion. If the case is in court, what we are discussing here will amount to subdued okay, sure. But the issue now is this. Please, let us look at it from the objective angle. How are we sure the case is telling us the truth? How are we sure this thing really happened? Because we, are taking, we, we have this um, um, a kind of media, media judgment all over the place. People lie against people. Don't look at the age. Smart children lie against people. And this big man we are talking about, you understand? He stood uh, innocent until the contrary is proved. Whenever we are dealing with a sensitive issue like this, this is a court of public opinion. People respect this program so much. We should not allow ourselves to be Thank given you. away. Thank you, Hassan. You know, on the show, what we try to do when we see cases like this, we discuss it for learnings. Yes. We discuss it to know because it's happened. Whether we like to isolate this case or not, mm. there are 17 year olds, 14 year olds that are Getting being raped, raped in this because country. there are helps. Because there are helps in people's housing and they're raped every single day. So, our learnings from this conversation is how do we help the abused girl? The wife with complices and make sure that the the, the, the man, the perpetrator, is, is also persecuted. That's the conversation. Because well, when no, I so my there, are quickly, just a minute. Wait, wait. there are certain presumptions you can get away with. Mm -hmm. Sex with an underage, under 18, yes. in our country, is a presumption you can get away with. So whether the man is proving innocent or not, did this act happen? Because some will now come and say, she seduced me. Under the child's right, this is a strict offense. Yes. You don't prove mental capacity of the child. If you are aware this child is your maid and the child is underage, you should not class the child, relation, any such abusive uh, right. relationship of one person older, one right. person in authority, all of such ab are presumptions you can get away with. What, so what, what he said, whether or not it is public court yeah, or anything, yeah. these are presumptions that... What, what he said was, are we on. sure he, he, um, the girl didn't lie? Because there are cases where even 13-year-old, 15-year-old lie about A the same things. Mm -hmm. However, this same um, um, online platform where the story broke, they've interviewed the wife and the wife did not deny the wife kept saying, and we haven't, I know you haven't watched the video, but the wife kept saying, but you that I treated like my sister, oh, that I took as my younger sister. No, he was just saying, why would you do this to me? Why would you bring, bring this kind of thing here? Public. Why would you bring, that was what she kept saying. Why would you bring this kind of thing here? So you she wasn't denying decide. something so it, it could have happened. It goes back to the fact that she's also a victim. Also, like that, that, that was, that, that was, that was, yes. a victim that we're in this together. Yeah. So, but, but for me, I, I see, when, I, when we see um, stories like this break out, and of course we discuss the stories, there, there are parts where we, what we do for people, what we do is to give girls like this a voice to speak up. Yes. And what important. calls like this do is to make them shut up, which is why we must continue to speak up, because there are victims who don't think there's an option, and they will sit down in the house and suffer in silence, sometimes to their death. Yes. We've seen several cases like that. Suicide. I know someone who right now, the story has not broken out yet, but in my guest social media, she was, he was raping house girl. They took house girl away, brought younger sister of the wife to the house. The younger sister of the wife has carried Belay inside house. For Oga. So these things happen. It happens. Let's not even so that, it. Everybody Let's that not passes, it. Seducing. It happens. And when it comes to dealing with poverty, people think that they assume, and that's why we should tell our stories of when things are tough. Mm -hmm. We've had Christmas in my house where the food we were going to cook was a gift that morning. We didn't know what we were going to eat that day. Mm -hmm. My mom and myself, my dad was in, um, had gone to um, Elisha, and I and my mom were at home, and there was nothing we were going to eat on Christmas Day. It was somebody that brought rice and tomato, and I burnt it. So we ate burnt food on Christmas Day, but I did not go to any other person's house for Christmas. Exactly. I'm saying teach your children to eat whatever you have at home. Yes. Lock your doors and live with dignity. And yes. let them be proud yes. of their life. Let's go on a break. When we come back, we continue this conversation. Stay with us, Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So this conversation is going to various levels. And I think the level where we are is before a young girl is actually sent to somebody to be a help, before a young girl is sent out to go and fend for the family, at what state is this family in? Hmm. Father, mother, were poor. Your father, your father maybe rides the Okada for some reason. Maybe he's, Okada, Okada got spoiled. He has nothing. The wife is selling uh, bubble gum and all stuff, you know, and she's just a petty trader. Mm -hmm. And you are trying to, you are a young 
14 year old girl trying to go to school and they're saying please go and meet this neighbor's auntie somewhere somewhere in on in, in um in the city mm. now that is poverty because i said that the poverty has levels mm -mm. Mm -mm. so if you have that level of poverty now are we preaching contentment even even at that level yes no matter what we're saying that your even child, if it's just this is your, all we your have children your children should never listen children because there's somebody family. sending somebody to, 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 the, to the city for house help work mm -hmm. yeah. there are people sending kids Morayo, to that, that, to the that, city for help people, that, that sending abroad over that darkness of ignorance sat over the people of Benue when they started sending their girls to Lagos, they called them Boko girls for maids. And sat over the people of Benin when they started justifying sending women to Italy, to Italy. for prostitution. Mm -hmm. May that darkness not sit of ignorance because it's not poverty. If you know better, you do better. Mm -hmm. If you know that, ah, the final consequence of this thing, no, no, I cannot subject my enemy, not to talk of the child I born. Through this, mm. I will find a better way. Murayo, the way to break out of this supposed poverty is hard work. Nine mm. years old, I was grinding pepper for my mother. Yeah. One naira fifty cobalt daily, per pa, 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 paint bucket. I know what I've made, and every single day she would reward me with my own money. I started earning at nine. Till tomorrow, there's this pride of me when I borrow you money, like I'm a big girl. I don't have more than ten thousand naira in my as account at the time I started business. Sometimes. When you give your child that training, you have finished your parenting. Mm. You can ask. sleep and close eyes. Some people can't even send their children to university without worrying that they'll fall under influence. Mm. Pay, do the work when you need to do it. And let you me, do it with sacrificing your comfort yourself. Right. Let me give you an example of Paul, of Paul. When my dad died and what happened, I, I hate to bring it up, but just for an example. And they left with everything. And they left my 24-year-old mother with nothing. She had to fend for us. We used to make this joke about my grandma. We used to say, ah, when we were growing up, she just never used to eat. All of a sudden, when you know, we had all grown up and things were better, she just had a healthy appetite. It was because the food was not enough. She would say, I'm not hungry. Yeah, I don't want to eat. Enough. We were protected. Yes, it was poverty, but we were protected from it. We, it was, now that we're older, we realized how bad it was, but mm -hmm. we were so protected. These children would not have to do this. We will do the work. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, and we know that this is a phenomenon now in Nigeria, where parents are just waiting for the child just to be a little old mm -hmm. so that you can do some work, do some Yahoo job, do some prostitution, do anything okay, to yeah, take care of the home. Yeah. When I was growing up, it was the children who would not have to suffer. I have people who come to my house, domestic staff now, who, when the meat is not enough, they'll put it in my plate. I'll not put it in my children's plate. They have not been taught. They don't understand the children first. I used to say this, that I don't understand the poverty of these days. Then we were poor, but we knew it was just material. Mm -hmm. We knew we were still human beings. We knew we still had confidence. Yeah. We knew we still had dignity. Why is it that now poverty is just an excuse for every evil thing that happens, yeah. every crime? It's because they are poor. Yeah. I was poor. My God, if I could show you the sort of House, the house that we grew up when we were little and where we have come from that. But I will forever be grateful mm. for that confidence and that dignity that they gave me. And I, that was what made me stand up straight and confident. If I was constantly reminded of my poverty and that I had to do some evil um, anything, um, anything, I, anything I would, really even anyhow. now, even now, whatever I get, I would be afraid to, to you know, be confident because I know so, what I had to do to so sit the here. the reality in this conversation is that whether we like it or not, as Tokwe has said earlier, because this is a big Nigerian man, he's a big guy, he's a, many people know him. He's a popular, I won't mention anything more than that. So because he's a big guy, he just, because of the Nigerian factor, he just might get away with it. Either pain his way sad. through it, because that's the Nigerian factor. So we're taking, we're working backwards. How do and we say, prevent? Don't even get your children to that point. Don't, don't let poverty be your excuse. Where you send your own child no. to be a slave. Because, that, that, because that, I, mean, I, I, I have the help that mm -hmm. lives in my house. I mean, she, we celebrated her 22nd birthday um, uh, a so few days ago. ago. And she comes from a family where her, I, I, I spoke to her father and her mother. I like, they know. Mm -hmm. So I am accountable to them. Yes. On their, her brother comes to the house. There's nowhere Don't she come is. and check I you. I see where her brother, I've seen the brother. I saw her brother for this for a poor family. I saw the brother at a mall. He saw me. I didn't recognize him. He came to, he came to deliver. He was a delivery guy. He delivered, introduced himself to me, and he left with dignity. No, I'm 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 I'm
Thank you very much for taking care of her. That's it. Have a good day. He did not beg you. He did not say anything. He didn't say that. He didn't say that. He had his helmet on. He packed it neatly. She's not a Nigerian. This is a Nigerian. He's a Nigerian. He's a poor family. And I know many like this. He's a poor family. But he has dignity. All he showed the children are in Lagos. They're doing well, but they are responsible children. You know how this works. If you are poor, and you, the least you can do is be a cleaner in someone's house. Your children will see you do that job. Mm. They will come to you at that job. You will teach them working hard and honest is okay. There's dignity in labor. I'm only trying to give you the best of life. That child will grow up accountable to you. What happens when you shield that child sometimes too much? And you're going there and say, ah, you are here, you. You, you people should just lie down somewhere. <laughs> is that that child grows up entitled? So I saw a child who said to her, uh, to her, uh, to, to her mom, who was cleaning a, a, a complex, that I don't know why you're doing all this dirty job. There are quicker ways to do things. I was shocked. <laughs> Can you imagine? I was saying to her, what age did you, how long did you leave this child? Did you ever tell her sometimes, come and help me? Yes. Did you ever tell this child, come and work with me? You have to start it early. We cannot continue to, when, when the child grows up, and somebody offers that child what they call a better life under any guise. They will think that they are doing better. I cannot work. I want to make money. I cannot work like my mother. Mm -hmm. I don't believe in hard work. You know? Make it, sell, sell it first to yourself and your child and your family. Let it be that in this family, anything that is not halal, okay. we will not consume okay, it. Okay, so I, want to, I, want I want to talk about the wife. Oh, before wife, I want to talk about ignorance. Um, ignorance in the fact that Many people watching this show have underaged help. You mm. have your 80-year-old girl as your help. You have a 12-year-old girl as your maid. Your house girl is <laughs> your house girl is 10 years mm. old. You know, your house girl that cannot even is your, your right is just you. yes. And you feel like, ah, I don't want all those uh, big girls. They are too sharp. They are too sharp. That's ignorant. One, it is illegal. And secondly, you shouldn't do to other children what you would not want your child exactly. to go through. So I have said in the minimum, I choose to employ 20-something-year-olds. I know some women that will say they don't do it because they are scared their husbands might look at the girl. <sighs> but I'm of the opinion that if, she's, if you are scared you look at the girl at home, he's looking at another girl outside. outside. So you might as well just do what you can. <laughs> I'm and telling can, you. And just employ a full-grown adult and then groom your adult house help to be confident enough to walk away if there's crisis. It is important that we don't take that... Um, I've had those conversations. I don't, I don't want a sharp girl. I want a small girl. Small girls should be in school. Small yes. boys should be in okay. school. A full-grown adult, someone in her 20s or in her late, like 19, 20, 21, 22, can say, for now, I want, to be, I want to work as a maid for a year. I had a maid that she was going to go for nursing. She worked in my house for just one year, collected her money, and right now she's married and a nurse. Yes. That's what she wanted yeah. to do. She doesn't yes, need money. See them. So so when you Let see us talk ones. about the wife factor. Yes. And this is the reason why it's so important is that from, from what, we are, what we can deduce mm. from this story, she's probably one of those young girls that the family said, go and marry a wealthy man from Lagos. So, and for you, so you're, not a being, you're not being sent to the city to be a help. Mm. You're being married off to a wealthy guy who came from the city yes. and is doing well. And you're young. And Maybe he's going to sponsor your education. Your dowry. He has paid your dowry. Now you're like his property. Mm -hmm. So he educates you. And he, he become, you become the wife. Mm -hmm. You do that for, you, have to, you, you give him five children. Mm -hmm. And then now he's looking at, so you feel that I, this man owns me. Mm -hmm. Because this is where this, this woman is coming from. Mm -hmm. she, this, she, she, everything about her is on this. So what, that kind of woman, how do we empower or emancipate her hmm. from this? Can she be emancipated? Because she hurt people, hurt others. She's hurt. That's why she can allow this little girl yes. be raped within, under her own roof. Because, hey... I was, I was, I came in as a little girl I paid girl the too. price. You I took paid the price too. Price. Hey. So how do Let's we? Enjoy the so life. we have talked about don't send your child as a help because she's underage. But what of you that are marrying the man legally? You're marrying this person. You're marrying this perpetrator. This and man who is a potential rapist. So it's just, it's, it's still, yes. So there's the personal one which applies. What we said about the young girl applies to her, which is just be content with what you have. So Genius. even as... Let me just even correct. So some people will come to your house as, as helps, or your family will bring you to that house as a help because that's what they feel is best for you. The, that family, even though they are poor, will still keep an eye to make sure that their children are still treated properly. Yes. We, we are only poor. It's not as if we don't have head. You know, <laughs> and then for the person that is married, too, the family would make sure that you are married to a man 
who does not abuse you emotionally, physically, or in whatever way. Do you know what? Do you know what is even more scary about this woman is that she's having children. Do we know what this will happen to, to the, the children, children next? This is a man that does not care really about the age of anybody. So her own would be an did education. It with a child. This, yes. this, 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 this and monster did this girl with a child upstairs mm -hmm. on his bed. This clown. Like he tells her to come 5 a.m. to come and pick the up the baby in, her, in his room. The baby is in his room. Come upstairs. I mean, this is sickness. The man himself is sick. That was, that, was my, that was exactly He's the way equally I sick. I just so felt like there three, three sick I people just, living under one roof. I just felt like, so, uh, man, so, so, what, 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 what are the children already seeing? The older ones, what are they already seeing? What children they, see? Or, or, what are they, they seeing? They're not seeing? What are maybe, they maybe they think and, they're not seeing. And, 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 maybe the and, woman does not realize mm. the, the children are seeing what is going on. Maybe if the children, she has the daughters, they will see a coward woman. Yes. They will see it is okay as a woman, as long as you are a bit comfortable, just allow it be. Uh, mm -hmm. And if they become victims themselves, they will wait. How bad is the damage? Mm. Let me just manage. You know, let me just, at least let me just have a roof over my head. This is why society has to take care of things like this. Mm. A man that is sick like that and is a da danger to society is locked up and treated as a sick person that he is. Okay, let me go on a break, Nima. Oh. Let me, when I come back, we, go, we talk about solutions. Let's, 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 we've lamented, yes, but let's, how do we solve this problem? Or how do we, what kind of problem, recommendations can we give this money? Stay with us, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So we're discussing solutions, and one of the key solutions we've given so far is contentment. Yeah. No matter how poor you are, no matter what level you're life in, you must have that life of dignity where what you own is Human what you, dignity. you, are, you, are, you are. You are content with what you own. Now, we're going to say something. Yes, I, uh, it, it also falls in, line, in the line of um, solutions, and I think it is be, be ready to start over. You know, the fear of starting over has put so many women and even men into relationships, into jobs, into a life of slavery, mm -hmm. a life where they suffer. So this girl doesn't want to go and start over looking for jobs somewhere else. The wife probably didn't want to go and start over with how many children by herself. There are many people who the fear of starting over would mm -hmm. keep them trapped in a place where they are actually imprisoned. You can't start over. You can change course. Um, I was talking to my lawyer yesterday, and I was talking, we were talking about registering a new company. And he was like, ah, your, the turnover, all this one. I said, I started that. I'll start another one. Mm. You can start over. Don't, don't, you don't, don't let your past trap you. Don't let the comfort of what you are facing. Oh, I have a good house. There is, everything is it's comfortable. Okay. So I'll now leave this good house, and mm. I'll now go and be looking for what am I going to do. Mm. Start over. Leave that place of pain. Leave that place where you are imprisoned and Get out, get your children out, and start like over again. The second, yes, and yeah. that, the second part of that starting over is also when government comes in. We yeah. need to Enabling. have a system that can provide security, protection, and justice for people who find themselves in a situation like that. Mm. If a daughter, if it would happen to his daughter, she should be able to go out of that family because she can trust the mother and go to a police officer, go through the courts and get some form of justice, knowing mm -hmm. that she'll be protected, be put in a home Support that she can, system. you know, help her. Or if it's a wife that finds herself being in a, situ in a marriage with a pedophile and an abusive person, mm -hmm. there should be a system that would, en would ensure that she will get, when she leaves that uh, marriage, she will get enough financial support that will maintain the lifestyle or, you know, a semblance of it for herself and for her children, away from that monster. We have, uh, our government in that way has failed so many people. And, you know, I, I don't like to use poverty as an excuse, but people would say that they are in these situations because of that poverty. But if they knew there was an option, if mm. they knew that there was a system, if they knew that there was a place to go that would provide them that support and that security, many of these people will be called out quickly. Mm -hmm. And many people will not even um, do those crimes because they know. So, Miriam, let me just quickly disagree a bit because, you know, with government resources, it is, it is going to be lean if you have to distribute among mm -hmm. more people. So government might not Civil exactly society. be able to give you the life and standard that the perpetrator of that crime gave you, mm -hmm. but it will give you an option. And as Topo said, you must be willing to start over. So if you were a duplex living person, comfort, water, light, everything, if you want to start over, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have all of that luxury. That's what I was Starting over is looking at the picture of that your dignity. And instead of this thing, I'd rather chop small. 
mm -hmm. I would rather sleep on the bed floor than on the bed with this kind of problem. Mm. So you must be able to, you yourself, must first of all be able to break free from that mindset of, it's only this luxury life I know, I cannot, I'm a baby girl for life kind of thing. It's a little leg with that kind of mentality. You cannot, you must be able to leave that comfort and start afresh, no matter what. So women will take their children out of this situation because we have, um, uh, uh, what's it called? within family crimes like this, where fathers are, mm -hmm. you know, also doing this to their Incest. children. Incest. and forcing their mothers to witness it. Yes. If you know what is better for you, you've seen this man, do grab your child, go inside the whatever do uh, uh, incivility that you can imagine. Wherever you and find peace. And start again. Mm. And peace. And start again. Peace. Give that your child. And in the end, justice will come because it will not be now, a circle. So, now, what kind of justice now? Let me, so, we talked about the wife, talked about the victim, the perpetrator. What are the legal options available? Because they will tell you you need evidence. I mean, that was just trying to do. Yeah. The, the poor girl was trying to set up the man, hoping that the woman would be recorded. Because mm. the woman said, she mantled that. The woman said, call me when he calls you so mm. that I can come and catch him red handed. Hoping that that would be evidence for her. For her. The, the woman didn't show up. The wife didn't show up. Yeah, because she knew. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. The woman so also blackmailed the girl yes. by posting yeah. her yeah. pictures yes. online. So, how so do that's, we that's, so prosecute this man? How, do, how does so the, both, both of them the actually. Need to prosecute this man? So, now, the girl has yeah. a story that she's. If any corroboratory evidence comes in, as it is now, she's 21, there are ways that this system, we have all these centers that, you know, they can get some evidence of continuous abuse of that area. And then that will start. Then they will need somebody to corroborate. The woman's statement that, ah, I'm disappointed that you brought this out in public is some form of corroboratory evidence that can help in prosecution. Is it going to be tough? Because they have the means it's to get the, the best of lawyers, mm -hmm. but it's not—it's not something that is not. Um, we cannot encourage an attempt at prosecuting. Mm. We must be able to, because if you look well, you will now start seeing people come out. That's how a Me Too campaign starts. Yes, you yes. start seeing other people come out and say, "Ah, and this is the crime against finally, the state." Not yes, and no, and so the state—that's why the state prosecutes crimes. Mm. If it was an individual, somebody can say, "Okay, like the lady that was slapped." That when the senator then decided to do well, would not just hear anything again. Mm. Mm. But some people, when the state takes cases like this over, the key witnesses are encouraged and protected, and we'll get prosecution. We need to start to make scapegoats of people like this. Blow this crime the way they are, as outrageous as they are. Let people see how it, and how it ends in prosecution. A grievous one at that, maybe a minimum 21 years, so that this person can deter um, other people who yes. have this kind of tendencies. I think we should talk about I I I identity crisis, I'd like too. I'd like to also open the phone line to 0812 Please, let's take a few messages. Mm -hmm. Yes, Tokoe, you're going to yes. talk about identity. Also, identity. Because when you have an identity of a victim, you would find yourself a victim in anywhere you go. Anywhere you, go. Anywhere you find yourself. And so it's important that we have conversations like this, so that people start real realizing what I how have I identified myself and it's not serving me well. And that's part of the things I've seen. I've had a maid who told me she does not eat, she cannot fry one egg. That she fries two eggs. And it's, for me, it was like, ah, if, you, if life was that good where you're coming from, then you won't come and work here now. Which mm -hmm. one is you, you cannot fry one egg? You fry two eggs. I said, okay, you buy the extra one egg by yourself by in my house. And she bought it. Yes. She bought it. Like, mm -hmm. she, she, she cooks, she likes, she likes the way you're cooking soup. And I wish I, when I saw the soup she was cooking, I felt this girl has really, really have amazing identity of how she wants to live her life. Oh, yeah, cook soup for me. Let me like add this. one example to this, your example. There's something that me, I grew up with, though, because we didn't have enough. You lit your mind and use that one to so, do the... I, this one so that I'm finding it hard to earn small money. They will leave this one, switch it up, leave this one. I'm like, ah, same, same, how same do you come from a home where you're supposed to manage resources, resources. and you don't know that? You know, know when matches was ten. Yeah, yeah, I'm telling, yeah, I'm too, telling yeah. you, I'm man. Telling you, man. Uh, I'm just saying, but that's it. That's how I grew up. I understanding Ma this is what I have. This is what I need to manage. No, no, I mean, I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> Break back my brain and the story. Because <laughs> I really want to find a story too. No, but, but I, you but, don't. You but, but, my you know, but I mean, So my, my dad, I mean, I remember growing up that my dad used to drive this Mercedes 200. And oh my goodness, how I hated that vehicle. Because I wanted him to change it. Like every, That was when the V-Boot was coming out. Okay. And he was still driving the old Mercedes. And I'll be begging the man that he changed this car. And the man would be, the car would be, pa, 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 pa. We'll be hearing it from. But you see, the fact that he, he, said, drove, he, it he drove it with dignity. As an NBA president, he drove it. Bro, bro, As a regular lawyer, he drove it. Uh, uh, every NBA, client, I'm, I'm, he, he, he would drive that car with Brown. That was the car he had till he died. Oh my and he God. was, and when when people when Dolphin Estate was was also trending, that all our family friends were moving Dolphin, there. Moving to Dolphin Estate was the biggest thing. My dad said, yeah, he told me because when he saw that we the kids were like, ah, 
And we know also going to Dolphin Estate. He called us. Mm -hmm. I have the money, but I choose not to call. We have, do you, we have a room. We have a house in the middle. <laughs> it is okay. We don't need to move you to Dolphin Estate. He made me understand that, yes, others might be progressing, but it's okay. Where, where we have, it's okay for us. Do you know sometimes I always wonder with these politicians that are being caught or stealing, you know, and mm. robbing the state treasury, what they tell their children. Do hey. their children grow up and say, I'm proud of my father, or proud mm. of my... Mm. And these children, what do they think is important? What are the virtues that they are learning from them that it's okay to steal, that it's okay to, to, to take away food? To having and to, having. Yeah, to take away food from the mouth of, of hungry mm. people. Because, mm. you know, this stealing that they do, because we don't see the direct effect, do their children someday when they sit down in class and they are calling names because, you know, in class you have the names of these people that have been corrupt. Do they feel shame or do they feel pride? But in Nigeria, I feel that many of these children feel pride because our society elevates these sort of people. Our society mm. celebrates them. And so now it's not about uh, feeling shame. It's like, how much did you steal? How much could you steal? You had an opportunity. You did not steal enough. We were smarter. We mm. sold enough. And that is why we would have widespread corruption. So people are modeling us. You know, yesterday, Fumi Yonder was like, the chaos that we're going through is because we're not ready to change it. Mm. We, when we see people doing the wrong thing, what are we doing differently? Mm -hmm. until, we're, until we make a stand mm -hmm. and do take, something differently before this chaos. Let me take this you know, message. Uh, De Dot to Adepoju says, former Nigerian international Godwin Okwara and his wife were jailed in France for taking sexual advantage of a girl that was sent to live with them in France. How long? And that ended his promising career. Mm. Um, Dr. Kim says the couple should be jailed for life in Potoki prison, Badagri. They are not fit to live in the midst of humans. Calling them devil will even be an insult to the devil himself. Wow. And he says, I like that all the ladies have on dignity and contentment. These are virtues we need to rediscover. Um, E. Olobia says, I have the greatest respect for this young lady. She does not need anyone's sympathy. She has done all that, um, she has gone, done all that through. Rather, she needs justice. Parents yeah. should teach their children to be content and live with dignity. There are too many men with mental issues and do, that do not seek help. Which is this person. Okay. Ade, are you there? Thanks for calling. Hello, Ade, are you there? Okay, go ahead. Talk. So, Insane Awin says, I'm still in good, shock. Good morning, okay. good morning Ade, you're live. Go ahead, please. Uh, yes, yes, you are doing a very good job. Thank you, God sir. God bless all your hope. Amen. Uh, my contribution to this issue is this. Uh, since I, I, didn't, I didn't know where, maybe if you can put it on your private uh, uh, Instagram or whatever, then we can know the story. Well, what I want to say is exactly that many of these types are happening in Nigeria or reported. Because poverty has level. There are some poverty that have lost hope, no hope at all. So with the situation of in Nigeria, even some hope, the husband can even train his wife for a weekend, go and get money and bring it. That is poverty that our government is putting the new generation to fall into in Nigeria. Poverty is everywhere, but our own in Nigeria is class. And that man, I don't believe the man's wife. The wife, I think the wife is a senior maid, while the other lady is a junior maid. Because no responsible wife will approve such things to happen in their home. You see, it, 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 I mean, it really affects my spirit. It's a terrible thing. Because somebody is under you, and you use that your power of money to do that. What of God's judgment? You know? Please, you are doing a very good right. job. Continue to Thank do a good job much. like this. You know, also, oh, all these other sayings we have, there's, mm. I mean, I think we also need to redress these things. That we've done, we've grown up with these silly talks. You know, there's one that um low one sorry, I think I don't like yeah. Yeah. stuff like that. Mm. You see, we we continue to make it look as if poverty is a disease. Yes. And also goes to is a situation. Um, um, to do all these our lives the motivational speakers. Mm. We reject poverty. Yes, poverty mm. is not a, something we want to reject. We, have, mm. we want to I like the man saying it's a situation and a you, situation. Can get out of. you can get out of it's it. It's a situation, it's not it's not a death it's sentence. Is, yes. Because the way they have made poverty as if ah. Everybody now wants to find every avenue out of poverty. It be it having my own girl go outside and go and do it. Statistically, statistically, the richest people in the world, most of them came from poverty. There is, oh. there are more people that are wealthy now that were born into poverty, and they are first generation. So it's the perception people. we look at yes. poverty, the way we see poverty. No, poverty yes. is bad. 
Mm -hmm. Poverty is bad on different levels. Mm -hmm. Poverty is, there's material poverty, and many times that material poverty can it's lead to so many mm -hmm. ignorance, lack of education, yeah. and you find yeah. yourself in things like that. So poverty is wrong, and then, is, sorry, it's a bad situation. But the problem we have is the success, the, the success um, preaching, where mm. is, it does not matter how you make it. Mm. It does not matter how mo um, who, who you had to steal from mm. to make it. Mm. We have today in churches where people, Most. we know that they have just stolen money from the government mm. and have come to church and they have been put in front of church and they are being worshipped. Mm. What are you money telling good? In church. We have those ones too. Where people, we, there was a time when this um, Obi, what's his name? That Yahoo boy. Obi -Wan. Yes. Mm. The stories we were hearing of parents saying, this one, does he have 10 heads? Why can't you be with this person? Mm. So it's not the poverty that is the problem right now. That's not even our problem. Identity, our problem is the dignity. success stories. How do you get there? Of the mm. definition of, thank you, the definition of success. Mm. What is it that determines success? We don't, uh, we don't celebrate all those people who have worked hard mm. to make some form of success for themselves. Mm -hmm. That maybe when they, when they started off, they, they lived under a bridge, and today mm. they are living in a one-room exactly. apartment. Mm. We don't mm. think those people have succeeded. When some people, and nobody so ever went to school in their family, but today they have like two or three people in the, how, how, you know, we don't celebrate those people. We mm. only celebrate people that are out of the blue. Right. They have so much money, they are spending mm. it lavishly, and we're like, that is what we need to be. And how dare you open your mouth to say you're jealous of the person. Mm. Let me take this cup on Beauty. Good morning, Beauty. Hello, Beauty, you're live. Go ahead, please. Just listen to the TV. Okay, um, there was a story that I remember when you, while you're talking, Miriam. Um, I went for a conference. I think I've shared this story before. It was a youth conference. Oh, yeah, I remember. <laughs> and they had a professor as one of the speakers. He came and was talking about his accomplishments. He has two houses. He has uh, he two cars. You know, he was waiting. Like, I've done this. I'm now retired. You know, and he was speaking. And for me, I was, like, impressed that this man worked hard. And he has two houses. And he's so proud of what he was saying. When I got on stage, I asked the young guy, I said, are you impressed? Are you impressed by the professor? Because the truth is that, in our reality, it is the Davido 35 billion that, that impresses you. Yeah, it's the yachts, it's the mansions, it's the le, house in Malibu, the house in, the, in, the, in, the, in the, the Those yeah. are the things that impresses you. So, are you impressed? And they admitted, no. Really sad. That, I don't want to be like him. Yes, mm -hmm. I mean, he spoke well, but I'm, I'm looking yeah. at the... Hmm. Because, so it's how we have defined success. That is so the young people that I see, the professor who is accomplished, that has built two houses and two has two cars, I'm like, good for you. That's not what I want to be like. I want to be much more than that. Mm. So how do we therefore find a middle ground where we define poverty and we define success in the right definition so that young people can know how to manage their expectations as they grow older? I think Nima already defined success, um, poverty as a situation. Um, it's a situation where you find yourself part-time. Um, and it mustn't, you mustn't internalize the situation and turn it into your identity. Mm -hmm. So, it's, so not, it's not an identity, yes, it's a situation. It's a situation. And if you follow what, um, follow principles of success, you work smart, you find your gift, you do it tenaciously, you would escape that situation into a, a more abundant situation. So, um, um, poverty mustn't become an identity, it mustn't become your life. And there, is, there are actually things governments can do. I know Nima was... Let me pause you for a second, sorry. Beauty is back. Good morning, Beauty. Okay. Are you there? She's listening to the TV again. Hello, Beauty, are you there? Oh. Don't listen Don't to listen the TV. To TV. Ah, so you can't hear please, me. We, the government can do things. I see people on the streets of Lekki, and it breaks my heart. Children, children, I'm talking four-year-old looking children. People, people that their hands can barely reach the car, yes. car and they are trying to wash your screen. And, I'm, and there are police officers around, around the junction. And they'll be like, what can they do? Where will they but, we, but the point is, they should not be on the streets. We must do something. Yeah, yeah, something cannot, again. So it's not about... Yes, now, you why know, would you put the children? Why can't why you, would you, why why would you the, the woman sits down on the road. Yes, the woman the sits children. down on the curb. The child you sit commodity. down on the curb and the children are on the road. Yes. So, so you, you arrest them. Arrest them through them where? In the prison. Wait, which prison? 
So, no, no, we have which prison now? Which prison is the prison that cannot work? 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 I'm very, very realistic. People will adopt those beautiful children of the streets. Yes. People will adopt them. They will. There are many who are struggling to get adoption done. Let's not discourage an attempt. Uh-uh. Because of the problem, you know, we did it in Nigeria. Yeah, we have right here in Lagos. They have Lagos. tried. They have wait, tried wait. to clear the roads, especially those no, on the streets. Not, they they, they were not consistent. They are consistent. Uh -huh. was consistent. Was consistent. We don't have I a saw foster a care woman. system I in Nigeria. I saw a woman on the bridge, of, on the co bridge, on my way from the island to to um, Coste, put a child on her hand and was begging with that child. And as soon as the child could not gain the attention of the person she was trying to get money from, she turned the child, a baby, toddler. If you put that child on the ground, that child cannot crawl away. Not talk of work. She turned the child, cry, cry, and beat the child to gain the attention. I went crazy. I was alone in my car. At the risk of everything, I felt like leaving my car door open to go and carry this one. The moment she saw I got her attention, she ran off that bridge. Let's not discourage an attempt because some people thrive and make their monies like this using people. If somebody was beating, arresting them, and discouraging their use of that public place like that, uh -uh. they would look for other means. Yeah. Well, Every okay. single okay. day in Lagos, I won't dwell on this they will push a child outside. I know that several governments have I, tried we, to get rid of the we are not going. So what we need is the government. The government is the one that will see that Nima. solution. The last solution is that for the So that's where the problem is. You don't have to arrest them, take them off. You carry a bus. Pack them, take them to the, and the motor park. Children. They will come back again. When you collect those children, you will find that the owner. Collect them and put them in your house. Yes, so. yes. You must create the system. You must create hey, a what building. You must create, we need Foster. a system. You yeah. must create a system, a building where those children will be, so that the original Riri parents will show up and say, but "I need to Our politicians can pay hundred million naira. They can pay hundred million naira for form. They say means to solve the problem. We can't discourage them. 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 We I think that's uh, where I'm we should look that. towards. I remember, do you people remember the story of Oliver Twist? Yeah. I think in yes. that time, for they too people. went through that period where children can just be taken up and mm -hmm. used for all sorts of crime. But now they have a proper system. To the, fa to the point that, you know, um, right now, people are very afraid how they treat their children, so their children are not taking it away from, away them. from them. So in Nigeria, we cannot con constantly say, what can we do? Oh, there's nothing we can do. We have to take the first step. And yeah. this is a way to look at this where parents are using their children for crime, for all sorts of things. When you get the children, because they are on the age, you can put them, through, put them in the foster care system. And the parent that feels really bad will go to look for the child or will do all that they need to do to, to be able to get, get their children back. So we have to look towards that. Mm. Nigeria is changing and evolving. We cannot keep staying in the way we used, you know, we cannot keep doing things the way we've always right. done. Uh, we have to wrap up on this because I know we have to bring in a guest uh, to uh, one of the fight workers. But I think um, mm -hmm. as we wrap up on this, um, I think this story is quite pathetic. And the reason why we're talking about it again is because there are many young girls in this situation right now. And we're hoping that by bringing more awareness to this conversation, we're letting the perpetrator know that, we, that the, the, this conversation would continue to go on. The wives who are complicit in this also to know that they there's help. You can seek for help because you also are a victim in this situation she is. And there are other times, and we're also asking that other um, non-governmental organizations, should we need to find a way to support them in supporting these people. So young girls in this situation should know that there are places you can call for help to get the attention of the, of the police to make arrests and then prosecute and see the prosecution to end. And I hope that um, this girl gets justice. As we said, it's a Nigerian thing. We hope indeed she gets justice. And we're hoping that we can prevent more people from getting into this, you know, by, by maintaining the dignity and contentment of what you have. And be ready to start. So, yeah, there are at least there are three things. Contentment and dignity. And yeah, and stop to fearing to again. start over. Mm -hmm. And governmental protective system. We need government yes. to protect us. Those three things are solutions to this problem. Cool. The foster care system, the good judiciary system, mm. the good police system to yes. ensure that these children are protected. You know, these are things we need to stop this from going forward. But I think we have to wrap up with this. Thank you very much. Let's go on a break. When we come back, we take a call from our freight workers. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back.